Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. I welcome you to the session, uh, the uh, second session. Uh, I hope all of you are doing well. Uh, this session, we have Professor Dr. M. F. Bakal with us. He is the Associate Dean, uh, College of Temperate Sericulture, uh, uh, Skost, Skost Kashmir, uh, Mirgun. Uh, oh, Sar is going to deliberate on um, mulberry, a multi-purpose tree as a protein source for livestock. Sir, uh, you have the control, sir. You uh, you have muted yourself first, sir. Can you unmute yourself? Hello, sir. Hello. Hello, sir. Hello. Sir, can you unmute yourself? Uh, can you unmute yourself? At uh, the screen where you saw my face, there's a microphone icon at the bottom. It should be red and you have to turn it white. Click on it. Hello? Hello, sir. You have muted yourself, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, hello. Jaha aap meri shak. Ha ha, sir. Ha ha. Ha ha. Abhi ek mein. Ye aap dekh pa rahe hain abhi. Right now you can. Okay. Uh, uh, aap uh, uh, PPT pe hain ki ya aap uh, mute. Uh, Now, uh, oh, just a minute. Now, uh, now you can hear me. Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, is it okay? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's perfectly fine. Uh, and now I'm no, audible, okay. huh? Yeah, 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 you are audible as well as visible. Now you need to start the presentation like we did. Uh, present now, then choose a window. Huh? Now no. my uh, my screen is visible. Yes, yes. No, no. Presentation is not visible. You stop the presentation. Can you click on present now again? Just a minute. Now I have to click on present now. Yes. Then window. Yes. Then select oh. the window which has the PPT. Yeah. No, no, you accidentally selected the wrong window. Is it? You you selected you uh, you selected the folder window. You have to start the PPT first, then choose the uh, uh, open the PPT first, sir. Just a minute, just a minute. Open the PPT, then choose present now. This is open the PPT. Yes, if it is visible, PPT is visible. Come back to okay. uh, meet where we uh, are talking and this is the window yes and choose the uh, present now slideshow first no 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 don't st start slideshow first okay 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 go to the window okay. window where you are you seeing me then okay, okay. present now choose a window choose the window which has ppt which has ppt uh, visible present the present window then you would have multiple windows. One of them is the PPT window. Is it okay? Uh, maybe it's loading, sir. Just a second, sir. Give it a second. Did you click the share, sir? Uh, huh? Did you click the share option? Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, now it is visible? No, 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 not yet. It's a palette to teaser. Abhi, aap kya kare? Abhi present now, kya choose? Uske baad window. Uh. उसके बाद जो विंडो में पीपीटी है उस पे क्लिक करना है नीचे शेयर प्रेस करना है वही तो मैं कर रहा हूं 
इससे पहले आपने परफेक्टली किया था प्रेजेंट नाउ अगेन See, this is present now again. Yes. Then this is window. Yes, you would have multiple windows showing yes. in that box. Choose the box. Then this is. Yes, yes, which has PPT. Then at the bottom there is share. Is it the blue color icon showing share? Share. Now give it a minute. Is it loading? No, no, yeah, not as of yet. Okay, just a minute. Now it must be okay. No, uh, no, not as of yet. Uh, but yeah, uh, yes, 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 sir. Start the slideshow, sir. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Start the slideshow, sir. Okay. Perfect. Slide show from beginning. Yes. Is it? Yes, yes. <clears throat> Can I start now? Yes, sure, sir. Okay. Uh, well, good afternoon. Uh, Assalamu alaikum and namaskara to all. I am immensely pleased to have been asked to share some information on Malabari as multipurpose tree in 21 days national training program on advances in fodder production, utilization, and conservation for improving livestock health, productivity, and environmental sustainability, which has been organized by Indian Grassland and Fodder Research Institute and National Agricultural Development Cooperative Limited, Delina Baramula. While scrolling down the list of white spuns, I could understand that there are a lot of fertile mines uh, ranging from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, I could see some of the friends from Karnataka where from I had my preliminary education and all that. So I feel that speaking before fertile minds like you will be just akin to showing candle to the sun. But somehow I will be somehow I will be in a position to make an attempt to place some of the information before you all. So uh, with this small note there, um, I have been asked to talk about Malabari as multi-purpose tree as a protein source for uh, livestock. In fact, uh, when you talk of the mulberry, uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. OK. In fact, when you talk of the mulberry, it belongs to family Moresi, which is, of course, a perennial crop and exclusively grown for leaf, which is the principal economic product of the plant. Silkworm, which is supposed to be a monophagous insect, it, this silkworm is the monophagous insect and the mulberry leaf incidentally constitutes the soul food for the silkworm and silkworm does not feed upon other plant other than the mulberry leaf. So if you talk of the majority of our silk production at this point of time comes from the Karnataka, which is contributing probably some 85 to 90 percent of the cocoon production as well, because it being the tropical belt. So uh, having said so, uh, uh, if, you, if, you, if you look at the mulberry, just to give a brief about it, if you look at the mulberry, its plantation, uh, rather the, the, rather the uh, plantation, it is an intercrop can be grown as a, uh, with cash crop, it can be grown singly, it can have an integration with the farming system, by virtue of which you will be in a position to increase the income of the farmer. If you look at the different ports of the mulberry propagation, it can be propagated, rather it can be trained as a bush, it can be trained as a dwarf, it can be trained as a tree. All such training methods have one advantage or different advantages with them. At the same time, some of them are accompanied by some disadvantages too. And you, it can be practically grown under varied altitudes ranging from 500 MSL to 4,005 MSL, 4,500 uh, and from me, uh, me, mean sea level. Then if you look at the different landforms, it can be cultivated on the plains, you can grow on the mountain hills, you can go, uh, grow in the valleys also, and it can be practically grown under diversified type of the climates. By diversified type of the climates, I mean it can be grown in the tropical climate, it can be grown in the subtropical climate, you have a temperate climate like that of ours, where it can be grown and even mulberry thrives well under arid conditions too. 
Once we talk of the different soils of the soil, wherein you can grow the mulberry, ranging from silisols to molisols, mulberry has no specificity for the soil where it can be grown. But yes, one thing has to be kept into consideration that as far as possible, the soils of the mulberry should have pH ranging from 6.2 to 6.8. By that, we can say the mulberry loves the soil, which is slightly what you call as acidic in nature. Having said so, under these conditions, mulberry can give you optimum the yield. However, in case the adverse conditions are going to be at the extreme level, then probably we will not be in a position to harness much out of the mulberry. So uh, if you look at uh, the, 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 the impact of the mulberry, from an environmental point of view, mulberry is supposed to be one of the best uh, plants which are naturally is concerned with preventing pollution and other threats to the environment and anyone that may be affected by it. For instance, preventing dumping of the chemicals into the local ecosystem or even ensuring proper manage of the maize lands. So that way, that, uh, way, mulberry, it is an environmental safety plant. It can protect you, or the, rather it can ensure you the best environment. Then if you look at the values of the mulberry, it promotes a human health that probably will be in a position to go through the future slides. It has a nutritive value from uh, what you call as fruit point of view, of course, from leaf point of view. Then another is the mulberry can be used in animal husbandry, with which we are supposed to talk about. Uh, it can be a fodder for the ruminants. Uh, it serves an economic empowerment because mulberry is perhaps the uh, only plant, rather sericulture is perhaps, to my information, only crop, which can give you quick dividends, probably from 25 to 30 days. And for practicing sericulture, you need not to go for certain sophisticated set of procedures, family labor, which is available in our families in the shape of our sisters, the shape of our mothers, or in the shape of our other women folk, they can easily handle various operations which are pertaining to the mulberry. So as such, mulberry ensures an economic empowerment, particularly of the woman, which is otherwise supposed to be what you call as uh, a neglected lot. Then so far as the wide distribution and flexibility in cultivation, as I told you, it can be practically grown in any kind of the climate. It can practically grown in the, any kind of the soil type. It can practically grown into any kind of elevation. And the nanoparticle synthesis, so far as the nanoparticle synthesis is concerned, it refers to the methods for creating nanoparticles. Nanoparticles can be derived from the larger molecules, as you know, are synthesized from the larger molecules to a very smaller level. Then mulberry can also be used as a biofuel production. Biofuel is supposed to be one of the most important uh, things which is taking off right now. And we have started using in the rockets also, in some planes also. So mulberry can be used as a, as a uh, I mean, mulberry can be used for the preparation of the biofuel as well. And so far as the medicinal properties are confirmed, mulberry provides as a pharmaceutical, uh, I mean, values, different types of the drugs are obtained from the mulberry, which find use in different kinds of the elements. Probably we'll be talking about that in our future slides. Then industrial applications. There are different kinds of the products which you can get out of using different type of the leftover materials for the value addition in sericulture. So that way we can easily say that industrial application also has a promise that which mulberry holds. Now, primarily the leaf is used, as I told you, the principal economic uh, product of this mulberry uh, plant is the leaf, which is used for the silkworm dating. On the top of this slide, you can see silkworms feeding on the mulberry leaf. Then they spin the cocoons. And from cocoons, the third picture, you can see we get the silk yarn. And silk yarn is finally fabricated in the fabrics. In fact, mulberry uh, sericulture, it ensures an income from the affluent class the class which is at the higher level to the class which is at the lower level. That means by virtue of mulberry sericulture, there's a transmission of the income from the people who live at the lower level, to, from the people who live at the higher level to the ones who uh, are the, are the downtrodden sect or who are living uh, below econo economic level. So mm -hmm. mulberry can uh, serve us that way. Hello, am I audible? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So somebody uh, kept his mic. Okay. Then so, so far... Oh, uh, uh, Madam Salpa, uh, um, sign and Madi Salpa. Please continue, sir. Okay. Okay. Please continue. Sir, it is the... 
okay okay then it has a greater potential for its exploitation and revenue generation for the stakeholders it's a multi-purpose tree of late there used to be concept rather earlier there used to be concept that mulberry is a plant which is of course exclusively grown for the production of the leaf and that leaf is in turn used for the silicone rearing and the silicone spun the cocoons and ultimately we get silk out of it but with the passage of time and with the advancement of science with more and more emphasis being laid on the value addition in the part of sericulture probably that idea has now gone that slogan has gone now mulberry is the tree which is used used for the multi many many multifarious uses and purposes the idea is just to augment the income of the uh, farmers and one beautiful thing with the mulberry is that it goes on yielding leaf without any much care and look after farmers even if they do not apply any kind of fertilizer farmers even if they do not apply any kind of what you call as farmyard manure to the mulberry leaf i am not talking of the karnataka where good number of the farmers have lot of mulberry leaf available with them lot of mulberry gardens available with them because i have been to karnataka i have almost uh, some 60% or 70% of the education from the karnataka from csr and ti mysore while lot of people we are who are dealing with the sericulture they have their own organized plantation and they of course must be giving certain inputs but if you look back our valley Uh, we are dependent upon the plantation which is available on the wastelands which is available on the burdens so hardly there is any farm which takes care of the mulberry in terms of putting any kind of input on the mulberry leaf so that way i say it goes on yielding without being taken much care about it is a gift by so it is a source of revenue for the silicon bearers as i told you then mulberry leaves used as a feed for ruminants leaf is converted to fodder cakes and fed to them i told you with the passage of time there has been a growing awareness about the mulberry leaf which is used uh, which is being used for the fodder as the ruminants and for other uh, purposes as well now this is the type of view we have a fodder uh, different types of the fodders which are being used for uh, what you call as um, uh silk worms uh and uh, i i mean which are used for the ruminants and other uh, uh, animals too then common plant species used as a fodder include we have brassica species we have clover we have sir uh, just a second sir 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 just a second sir the, i think the presentation is not completely visible there are only parts of presentation visible uh, can we uh, stop presenting and present uh, present again because only half of the slide is visible what is the problem I but i i but i can see my full slide on my laptop no sir uh, uh, can you stop presenting on the uh, meet and start presenting again i think there is some problem with the slide because only half of the slide is getting displayed so what you want me to do you want me to stop sharing yes stop sharing yes sir okay okay go to uh, again do the process of presenting uh, again St uh, st I... again the process present now present now present now okay then i will have to end the show i think first No, no. Uh, sure. In the show setting, there might be some settings that might have got accidentally changed. The resolution will be. Just a minute. Just a minute. To choose a window again, choose the PPT one. Present window. Uh, this is the PPT. This is share. Yes. Uh, from current slide. Is it visible yes. now? No, don't don't do from current slide. Uh, how many points? Only two points. Hello. Are there only two points shown, sir? Are there only two points on the slide? Yeah, there are only two points on the slide. Yes. Okay, now it's fine. Now it's fine. Now it's fine. Huh? <laughs> I have. There are. There is very less text on the slide. Uh, no. I I think slides. Two no, points. You can see that image got cropped. Image got cropped. Anyway, sir, continue, sir. Now you can see the major challenge and feeding resource. Yes, yes, perfectly, sir. So, so, so there are only two. Uh, there are only two. Uh, this thing, what you call as no, so no, fodder no. requirement. So fodder requirement. You say you have a major challenges, shortage of feed and fodder, which needs to be addressed, enabling the what you call as sector to grow according to the potential. Then we have feeding resource of livestock are broadly classified into three components: 
namely crop residues, green fodder, and concentrates. When I talk of the major challenges, we have a major challenge of fodder. Fodder in the sense, our land area is becoming shrunk with every passing day. There's a lot of intervention from the people. There is an anthropogenic uh, intervention. We have talk of the infrastructural development. All these developments have to necessarily take on the uh, take on our land and ultimately it becomes shrunk. With the passage of time, our grazing land, our land which is otherwise meant for fodder and all those, that is become decreasing the site. With the result, we will be decreasing in terms of our fodder requirement. We will not be in a position to, if the situation goes unabated, probably we will not be in a position to serve our, uh, I mean, the livestock in so far as their fodder is concerned. Then uh, you have a crop residue is the biggest feeding resource for animals, as you know. It makes 60% of the total dry matter availability. Green fodder is 30%. You have a concentration to the extent of 10%. If you look at the cattle weightage, 350 kgs require around 7.5 kgs of dry matter every day for substance. So without taking the nutritional need for enhanced yield into consideration. In fact, this was a study which was Karnataka. in, there is one place in Karnataka, Bangalore, that is Adagudi. There is one uh, center that is near uh, people who are from the uh, hus animal husbandry, they must be knowing it better. That is National Institute of Animal Health and uh, Parable Physiology. They have uh, taken the, the uh, variability of the fodder, uh, uh, fodder availability data. And at the end of the say, there's a report a working group for 12th plan is we have dry fraud at 10%, green fraud at this much and concentrate on, uh, I mean, 33%. As demand for milk and milk, products will grow to at least 20, 10 million tons by 2020. This is because of the fact that our population explosion is taking place like anything. On one hand, our resources are getting depleted. And on the other hand, we are not taking any care. We are not taking any precaution in terms of repleting these resources back. And in case the depletion of our resources takes place at such a heavy rate, then I'm afraid probably with the due course of time, we will not be in a position to not only feed our tummy, but at the same time, we won't be in a position to get anything for our livestock too. So this is a matter of concern. We have to see whatever the pastures, whatever the green layers, whatever the grazing area is left for the animals, that has to be preserved, that has to be increased in terms of its acreage, so that in future also we'll be in a position to feed our livestock and ourselves too. So to boost milk yield, India would perhaps need to generate 1,764 million tons of fodder by 2020. But existing resources can only manage up to 900 million tons of fodder, thus leaving a deficit of 49%. So this is a matter of concern. This is where policymakers have to intervene and see how best... Am I audible, by the way? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, so, because because in between, I will have to see whether I am audible to the audience. I am sorry for that. Uh, no problem, so, sir. Whenever there is some problem, we will give you feedback okay. from outside. Fine, 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 fine. So, so, but existing resources sources can only manage about 900 million tons. So, this speaks that we will be left with a deficit of 49%. Now, in order to plug this gap, almost 50-50, in order to increase this 49% for the requirement by 2020, it's a matter of concern. We will have to see how best we will be in a position to pull our heads together, pull our minds together, our technocrats have to sit, and those people who are directly or indirectly associated with the livestock rearing, they will have to have the opinion and get a common consensus how exactly we in a position to increase our this so that our fodder star does not, I mean, uh, the livestock does not suffer. So challenging facing livestock, as I told you, you have scarcity of feed and fodder, and this scarcity amplifies, this goes on increasing with every passing day. Most of the grazing lands, I told you, have either been degraded or encroached upon, restricting its availability for grazing. We have uh, we, now, 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 now we have seen that almost every day there's a news in the media that at Falani place, Falani animal took Falani people. Falani, uh, this uh, there was a herd of the lions seen on the national highway. There's a herd of uh, there was a herd of uh, other animals, wild animals seen. The reason is why because the reason is very simple. We have taken our flight to the forests. We have impeded the habitat of the animals. We have gone to the jungles. We have disturbed the ecosystem of the forest. And ultimately, we are seeing the rot. We see that animals coming from in search of their habitat, which has been dilapidated, which has been disturbed. So this is the area where we need to concern, where we need to focus upon. And all the way, a complete halt, a complete stop has to be brought into the system. The area under fodder cultivation is limited to about 4% of the cropping area. And it has remained static for the last four decades. 
case it has not i say it has not only remained static but whatever we have that is also being depleted so probably i am afraid at this point of time if we go with the statics it will be far far less than 4% so low quality fodders especially during winter season now whatever the fodder we have now whatever the availability we have low quality fodders especially during season winter season and adversely affect the productive and reproductive performance of animals yes even if the quality of fodder we have whatever less amount we have but the qualitatively it is not so good and with the result the quality of the milk the quality of the produce whatever we are getting from the animals is not to that extent it does not go below one's gut so it's again a matter of concern so little or no research with respect to development of new and improved varieties of fodder uh, has taken place that again remains to be seen again we have to channelize our energy channelize our efforts towards this uh, direction now we have seen that challenges are many now my these slides still i mean till this slide we have must be in a position to get an idea that challenges are many but requirements are more so probably here is where i creep in here is where i as a sericulturist would like to promulgate my mulberry how exactly if not to 100% how exactly to a uh, larger extent it will be in a position to serve the fodder requirement of our uh, livestock uh, which is uh, the need of uh, perhaps our a natural association of mulberry and livestock occurs in regions where mulberry trees are grown is a natural association fallen leaves in the autumn are consumed by the domestic animals when there is a senescence now say for example if i talk of my place ours is in so far as sericulture is concerned probably sericulturist will try to make uh, understand in our crop we have a monocropic state we take only one crop and that crop we that will be the spring spring rearing will be our spring crop will be the one crop which we take in the state of uh, i mean unit union territory of jnk but if you apply it to the tropical areas if you apply it to the traditional states like karnataka tamil nadu andhra pradesh uh, kerala and what you call as west bengal also particularly i am talking of the tamil nadu and karnataka multiple croppings are there they take some 15 to uh, 18 uh, 15 to 18 to 20 crops per year because of the simple reason that mulberry is available throughout the year and that too because of the sunshine which is available throughout the year in these states but if you put it in our system we have sunshine available for the 6 months probably and so mulberry is there available for the 6 months for rest of the uh, months we do not uh, any leave with the result what you call as uh, uh, there is no rain number one number two during late or during autumn season when there is a natural senescence the leaves fall from the what you call plains uh, plants ultimately no rearing is there these leaves are converted into fodder cakes with a mix of jaggery and whatever so those fodder cakes are being fed to the the cattle to the livestock so i am telling you at places while sericulture is there they, by default there is some natural association if not 50% if not 40% but at least there is 10 to 15% natural association between the mulberry and that of the livestock which is available in that area fallen leaves in the autumn are consumed by the domestic animals in hilly areas too where mulberry trees are abundant their leaves are uh, fed to animals which is usually practiced in the villages then it can be grown either as a tree or shrub mulberry can be grown uh, as a tree or it can be grown as a shrub and harvest is several times a year under tropical conditions as i told you due to their high digestibility values mulberry leaves can be used to supplement even low quality forages incorporation of leaves in feed reduces the cost of production it has been uh, reported by mija now it is a perennial source of fodder particularly at those places where tropical climatic conditions are there because mulberry is available so it is a perennial source of fodder it grows anywhere so can be used to reclaim wasteland whatever the wasteland available where other plants would not be possible to be grown mulberry will thrive well there subject to condition if little modification is needed that can be done on very minor scale it's very hardy plant as i told you and grows well even without chemical fertilizer supplementation fodder obtain is free of chemical residues which in turn can help in raising organic produce then it can be stored easily in form so there is no problem on that account too mulberry leaves have an appreciable potential as a protein source in livestock feeding and it has been there has been good amount of documentary research which has proved beyond doubt that mulberry feeding to the cattle improves the quality of milk 
improves the quality of meat and productively results in the increased productivity. Then complementary association of mulberry with clover for sheep and cattle grazing leads to nitrogen fixation. Association produces more forage over a longer period than the individual crop. Now, if you look at the nutritive value of leaf, by virtue of which we are able to say that yes, mulberry can constitute, mulberry can be a substitute for a fodder for the livestock. It's probably because of its nutritive value. Leaf yield fr varies from 35 to 45 tons of fresh leaf per hectare per year. Leaves cert contain nearly 70% of the moisture. The foliage of the mulberry is highly digestible and excellent crude protein. On dry matter basis, if you look, uh, it leaves contain ash to the extent of 14 to 22 percent. It has calcium 22.4 to 4.7 percent. Then is a phosphorus 0.2 to 0.9 percent. Then it has uh, ferrous that is parts per million 350 to 840. Even potassium from 1.6 to 3.2. So the ingredients. The presence of this such a treasury of uh, nutrients and micronutrients in the mulberry makes it an exemplary food for ruminants. Mulberry leaves are good source of essential amino acids too. It has lysine 1.88%. They are rich in ascorbic acid and contains carotene, vitamin B1, folic acid and uh, other ingredients as well. If you look at the mulberry leaf, it has an aspartic acid, glutamic acid, I mean all the amino acids are available there. Then you have some what you call as uh, mystic acid, mylostolic acid and pentodium acid and the concentration of each is again shown in the mulberry. So this again qualifies mulberry to be one of the best fodders for our uh, livestock. Now, mulberry is 80 to 100 percent better than grasses and 40 to 50 percent better than legumes. The use of tree forage as component of diets is widespread. These feed resources have good nutritive value and positively impact the human function and microbial uh, yield. Use of such forages is also the most practical method, as has been said. Uh, then fodder trees and shrubs have gained great attention for improving the livestock productivity in uh, developing countries as well. The nutritive value of mulberry is one of the highest found in products of vegetables origin and is far superior to cellular crops, residues and traditional forage, forages. So this again uh, qualifies mulberry to be one of the best, uh, I mean, the feeds uh, for the ruminants. Mulberry leaves in animal feeding, to put it in a very simple way, we have the potential of mulberry leaves as a fodder crop has been investigated a uh, good number of times. Mulberry leaves may be used as supplementary protein source for ruminants. Mulberry leaves are a good source of energy and protein for ruminant animals. It is by virtue of perhaps these qualities that the quality of milk, which has been proved beyond doubt, that in case cattle are fed with the mulberry leaf in the shape of mulberry leaf itself or in the shape of fodder cakes, I mean, uh, fortified with some other jaggery and all those things that can serve as one of the best foods for the, uh, uh, I mean, the cattle. Diet supplemented with mulberry leaves leads to increased body weight. Milk production increases with the levels of mulberry offered, which has improved beyond doubt. Experiments with the sheep and cattle have uh, shown that the mulberry leaves are nutritious and can be profitably utilized as a supplement to poor quality roughage. Sulfur is required together with nitrogen for microbial protein synthesis in the rumen. Now, the concentration of sulfur is greater than 1.5 grams per kg dry matter. Both these requirements are met in mulberry leaves. In addition, they are free from the tannins. So these all qualities, again, beyond doubt, make mulberry to be one of the best foods for what you call as silk worm, of course, but at the same time for our livestock uh, as well. Even mulberry leaf stocks, leftover feeding silk worms can also be used for feeding cattle without any adverse effect. Chemical composition of leaf stocks, person diameter basis was this much anyway. Uh, so mulberry uh, this was about the pollen uh, i mean uh, as for the feed for the ruminants then mulberry uh, has its role to play in poultry feed as well mulberry leaves can also be used in poultry uh, what you call as uh, rations uh, incorporation of shade dried mulberry to the extent of 6% showed an increase in egg production with desirable yolk color mulberry leaves owing to their high carotene content in fact we add uh, College of Temperate Sericulture, uh, Sheri Kashmir University of Agricultural Science and Technology have also uh, taken a uh, project on this, uh, I mean, uh, mulberry uh, as a poultry feed. And the chicks, or rather the uh, hens, which we got out of that experiment, weight-wise, digestive availability wise we got promising results as well. So mulberry, besides being a silkworm feed, besides being a cattle feed, can also serve as a good poultry feed as well. 
incorporation of mulberry into poultry feed to the extent of 10% resulted in increased body weight, feed conversion efficiency, and uh, suggesting that the mulberry leaf powder uh, supplementation at 10% would cut down the cost of poultry feed as well. Now, if you look at this uh, use of mulberry leaves in diets for broiler chicken, decreases total uh, content of saturated fatty acids, increases the linoleic acid uh, significantly. Now, inclusion of up to 5% mulberry leaves in poultry diet increase the quality of the breast muscle by decreasing the concentration of saturated fatty acid. This is why the study is conducted by Margareta in 2015. Then mulberry leaves included in poultry feed significantly reduce the levels of ammonium sulfate, uh, which is responsible for order in manure. Again, this is why the study is proved beyond doubt. If you can integrate of poultry rearing into mulberry gardens, can be beneficial in terms of feeding additional organic fertilizer quantity of product uh, poultry products of late a concept has uh, i mean started developing that integrated farming system why then under similar roof different types of agricultural components could be started about the farmer if we apply it to the silkworm on one hand we'll be taking the silkworm rearing for which we'll be using the mulberry leaf on the other hand the leftover leaf which is 40% of the total fed uh, to the worms, can be used as a poultry feed. Even pupa, whatever is left after the, we get uh, co reeling, after we reel the cocoons, the pupa comes out. That pupa can also serve as a poultry feed. So under all, and you can go for intercropping with the mulberry. So this is a common is example of the composite farming, wherein different components of mm, Mulberry could be used along with amalgamation of the different agricultural components to thus setting an example of the integrated farming by virtue of which the far income of our farmer could increase, uh, uh, I mean, doubly. So mulberry in feeding of milk animals, mulberry is an excellent feed for high yielding animals and can be offered as I told you earlier. Then you have after 60 days of feeding of mulberry leaves, the milk protein carbohydrate contained was enhanced significantly in both cow and gold milk. Again, a study by Kumar et al. during 2015. Further, the lipid content in cow milk was enhanced to 4.5% and in goat milk 4.9% after 60 days of the mulberry feeding. So this is the promise which uh, what you call as mulberry holds. Now there is one disease, I mean, the, those people who are directly dealing with the, uh, any, uh, I mean, the livestock, probably uh, they will excuse me in case I am not in a position to uh, rightly put the slide because uh, I have least information about this thing. Grass tetany, an important production disease of dairy animals related to low magnesium, high potassium and high uh, uh, calcium plus magnesium equivalent ratio in the forage. These were uh, studies conducted by uh, the, uh, what you call as Carlin. Now it is apparent that mulberry has good mineral components that probably prevents grass tetany. Excitement and muscular sparums are one of the symptoms of the grass uh, tetany are the most common symptoms. In the mildest, mildest form of this disorder, the cow may have an abnormally low level of magnesium in the blood and yet show no signs. Initial signs of the disorder include twitching of the face and ears, a very appearance and perhaps stiff gait, which is indicated by the cows. But it has been reported that in case mulberry, which is rich in the magnesium, is fed to the uh, cattle, probably uh, we will be in a position to, if not fully uh, control, we will be in a position to keep this grass tetany at a bay from our livestock by feeding them with the mulberry because of its presence of the magnesium. So the effects of supplementing mulberry leaves and libitium to concentrate diets of angora rabbits on wool production indicates that mulberry leaves can be advantageously incorporated in the diets of angora rabbits for wool production. So again, a promise which is, I mean, uh, uh, hold which mulberry our holds. In rabbits, the reduction of the concentrate uh, offered daily from 110 grams to 117.5 grams with at libitium fresh mulberry only reduced grains from 24 to 18 grams, but decreased to more than half of the cost of the meat produced. So again, a mulberry holds a promise in fish feeding. Feed prepared from the mulberry leaf has proved to be better in terms of survival rate. Feed conversion ratio and growth rate than feed prepared from the ground line oil cake. Use of mulberry feed significantly reduced incidence of open source. And overall input cost is also reduced. It has been uh, earlier shown that longer the raceway 
I mean, those people who are from the uh, Ekebal culture, fisheries, if any, uh, longer the uh, raceway, better will be the health of what you call as uh, uh, the, the fish uh, produced here. But at the same time, if those fish which are in that raceway are provided with the fed with the pupil meal, their health will be more robust and they will be in a position to have improvement in terms of their uh, nutrient content and other things. So it can be easily integrated with livestock. You see the picture shows the indicates the pupa, leftover pupa. Silicone waste pupa can be used for feeding of fish and poultry to achieve high productivity and sustainability through recycling of the waste. This is otherwise the pupa which we cut the cocoons. Uh, we cut the cocoons and these are the pupa left over or once we reel the cocoons after reeling there is a leftover pupa which is being dried and after it is drying it is being fed to the fish as the fish meal. A model of sericulture and milk production proposed by Mala et al in which dairy cows receive mulberry residue and concentrates. Diffuse material can be added to fish ponds for herbivores carbs in the generate food and output for a large number of the people. So again, a fish meal uh, can be, I mean, uh, this pupil meal can serve as better fish meal as well. Now keeping in with the nutritive value of, and it is positive impact on the overall performance of the livestock and uh, what you call as uh, easy integration with livestock system, including fish. Malabiti can be used in appreciable amounts to achieve sustainable productivity and at the same time, lower the input cost. So uh, the various leftover materials in form in the shape of twigs, in the shape of, uh, I mean, uh, off form, uh, I mean, on form, the leftover material that can also be converted into the suitable, uh, I mean, type of vermicompost type of things are suitable decompose, which can also be used to increase the fertility level of the soil while mulberry or for that matter, other agricultural crops are grown. In addition to this processing of mulberry fruit into value and marketable products like jam, juice and jelly, and even mulberry tea also holds a promise. And ultimately, exploitation of mulberry, all these accrue, all these bend upon focus, uh, focus upon one thing that by virtue of exploiting these various attributes of mulberry, we will be in a position to what you call, uh, sir, uh, I mean, add value to sericulture as a whole. Now, vermicompost, as I was telling you, this is also one area why leftover farm material. Uh, mulberry uh, is being used. It is presumed. It is. Uh, it is uh, presumed that every one hectare of the mulberry under tropical climatic conditions generates 15 metric tons of waste. So, if this 15 metric tons of waste is suitably converted into vermicompost through the action of those earthworms. Uh, uh, it can be suitably converted to the vermicompost. And it is said that again as 20 metric tons of farmyard manure, which is being applied per hectare per year to mulberry, six metric tons of vermicompost will do. So that means vermicompost is better than farm, uh, what you call as farmyard manure as well. Vermicompost thus generated can be applied to mulberry, as I told you, at the rate of six metric tons as again as 20 metric tons of farmyard manure. Then uh, if you look at the diversification of uh, sericulture activities, more diversification, you have good amount of the products which you can get out of the food. You can get mulberry jam, you get mulberry syrup, you get mulberry tea, you get mulberry feed block, and you have cocoon crafts of late. We have been able to uh, convert the, some of the leftover cocoons into cocoon crafts of very suitable elegance and sheen. So based on the highly satisfactory performance, mulberry jam and syrup, which we have, I mean, produced at College of Temperate Sericulture in Mirgun. It is at this point of time marketed under the name Snowkist. Of course, it was initially branded as Snowkist. Now it is being sold under the name Shalimar Jam. So these are some of the cocoon crafts uh, which we make out of the leftover cocoons. On the right hand, uh, uh, on your left hand top, perhaps you will see uh, the uh, cocoons convert into roses. Then you can see some guidelines are, are there. In Karnataka, we have a uh, bigger, bigger perhaps industry for it, which converts these leftover cocoons or waste cocoons into suitable garden nets, into small craft type of things, which has an open market uh, over there. So that means from needle to aeroplane, from a single blade of leaf to any leftover naishi, mulberry can be produced to, to or rather put to effect use for the purpose of income augmentation of uh, farmers. Now, mulberries, as I told you, uh, it are powerhouses of nutrients. They contain good amount of protein, carbohydrates, fiber, vitamins, uh, anthocyanins, vitamin C, which have antioxidant functions. It has been reported 
that a multi-nutrient feed block prepared from mulberry fruits has increased its milk production uh, from 30 to 50, 30, 30 to 50 percent. So it is mentioned that the technology of utilizing mulberry fruits as feed blocks for animals also holds a promise besides converting this mulberry fruit into a sizable amount of uh, what you call as sizable type of products like jams, juice and jelly. So nutrition value of mulberry fruit, if you have a look upon this, it has protein 1.44 grams, and then carbohydrates, fats, fiber, calcium, and potassium, and magnesium, 18 milligrams uh, per 100 grams as well. Then vitamins, you have vitamin C, you have ascorbics, you have thiamine, you have riboflamin, you have niacin, and all other uh, vitamins present in what you call as uh, mulberry fruit. Antioxidants in mulberry are ample. Mulberries have a uh, significantly high amounts of phenolic flavonoid phytochemicals called isoanthocyanins. Uh, Scientific studies have shown that consumption of berries has a potential health effects against cancer, aging, and neurological diseases. It is said that mulberry drink is, uh, uh, I mean, very interesting, uh, serves as a very interesting drug against melancholia, against monotony. Melancholia is if somebody feels or somebody finds himself in a state of sadness, in the state of the despondency uh, drink of mulberry will probably uh, take him uh, out of that uh, what you uh, that uh, disorder uh, so uh, we have the berries contain uh, reservatol another polyphenol flavonoid antioxidant uh, reservatol protects against stroke risk by altering uh, the molecular mechanism in the blood vessels as well also these berries are excellent source of vitamin c 36.4 milligrams per 100 gram, which is also a powerful natural antioxidant. Consumption of foods rich in vitamin C helps the body, as you know, to develop resistance against infections, agents, uh, countering inflammation, and scavenge harmful free radicals as well. Then further, the berries also contain small amounts of vitamins A. Consumption of mulberry provides another group of health-promoting flavonoids, polyphenolic antioxidants such as lutein, zeatin, B-carotene. Altogether, these compounds help act as a protect from harmful effects uh, against the reactive oxygen species. Zeatin, an important dietary carotenoid, selectively concentrates in the retinal macula lutea, while it is thought to provide antioxidant functions, and as such protects the retina from the harmful ultraviolet rays through light filtering actions. So that is one of another tribute which can one other attribute which can which can which we can attach with the mulberry. And mulberries are an excellent source of iron, which is the rare feature among berries. It contains 1.85 milligrams per 100 grams of fruits, iron being a component of hemoglobin inside the red blood cells. Mulberry fruit is also used in the pharmaceutical industries. The sole use of mulberries in modern medicine is for preparation of syrup to add flavors in natural colored medicines. Mulberry fruit is used for many medicinal purposes as well, as I have told you. So uh, these are some of the attributes which are associated with mulberry fruit as well. They also uh, a good source of mineral like potassium, manganese, and magnesium. Potassium is an important component of cells and which helps with the body building. They are rich in beta, uh, B complex group of vitamins and vitamin K contain very good amounts of vitamin B6 as well. So uh, if you look at the mulberry fruit products, you have mulberry fruits, uh, you have what you call as many excellent characters like nice taste, large size, attractive color, and high nutritive and medicinal. Uh, values as well. The juice, which is refrigerant, uh, is used as a drink in febrile disease. If somebody complains of the fever, uh, mulberry juice can just uh, recede it. It checks thirst and cools the blood. Fruit juice is commonly used for reducing high fever as a febrifuge. This is the first treatment normally given to any patient with symptoms of fever during endemic malaria. These were studies which were conducted by Shiva Kumar during perhaps 1995. It's mentioned by Singh 1997 that syrup uh, recipe prepared from mulberry fruits are used again as hyperplemia, constipation, and insomnia. As I told you, drink of mulberry under the influence of melancholy can remove one's monotony to a very large extent. So they are very rich in vitamins. As I told you, mulberry juice applied directly on hair can revive the hair roots and stimulate healthy hair growth again. Uh, you can uh, have uh, drinking glass of mulberry juice also improves the vision. It also protects eyes from free radicals. So all these attributes are associated with mulberry. Each and every part of the mulberry can be put to a valuable product 
can be used for enhancing the income of our farmers. Then you have fruit tea. It's natural, pleasantly savor all year round, hot or cold. It does not contain caffeine and therefore can be safely drunk at any point of the day. In Chinese markets, mulberry is often provided in the form of paste called sangshinagoa, mixed in hot water to make tea. So uh, this is how they have used the potential of the mulberry, uh, exploited the potential of mulberry as tree. It is used as a coloring or what you call as flavoring agent as well. Now it finds its use in the cosmetic industries. So this array of the attributes uh, which mulberry has qualifies it to be one of the potent plants whose multiplication can be taken by each and every one of us on a large scale. Mulberry fruit powder harvesting from the field can be washed and dried in sun. Dried berries can be converted into powder in a grinder and can be later used for making fruit tea or drink any time later. Uh, at present, we are taking that tang, which comes under uh, different uh, flavors in the market. So why can't we use mulberry powder as a substitute for the tang and see how best we'll be in a position to relish the taste. And uh, so if we have mulberry puppet also, in fact, one of our scientists, that Irfan namely, has been in a position to make these products. So wash the fresh berries to remove dust. You can have to cook the berries and just convert them into suitable puppets. They are very crispy and uh, tasteful, containing uh, all the micro and micronutrients, which are uh, otherwise responsible for energizing your body. So you have mulberry toffee as well. Mulberry fruit can also be used to make uh, uh, toffee of uh, one kind or the other. So I believe uh, having said so, or having taken you to the long voyage of these slides, I have left, I am being left with the conclusion that uh, we have two to perhaps leads, uh, many slides, which leads us to the thinking that sericulture industry now ceases to be thought of the industry which, with which people used to be associated just only for the purpose of silicon raising. Probably that conception is gone. The tremendous uses of various byproducts of sericulture industry not only make it uh, what you call as unique, but farmer friendly as well, since the taste of the farmers vary from individual to individual. Yet different farmers can cultivate mulberry depending upon choice and suitability of their use. And as such, can, can augment their income by one way or the other way. Only one thing is there, how exactly we will channelize our thoughts, how exactly we will be in a position to make our mind that for what purpose and for which purpose we will grow the mulberry. In fact, even if mulberry is grown just for the purpose of having the idea that I grow it for the silkworm rearing, but at the same time, other parts of the mulberry can be used for the valuable products by virtue of which farmers will be in a position to enhance or uh, augment their income in a big way. So this is the Morris Nigra plant, which gives you shatul. Of course, its leaf, because of its hairy condition, is not used for the purpose of silicone rearing. Yet the fruit the plant provides is very uh, beautiful to taste. Very, uh, of course, with a, it is accompanied with a little sour taste, but it is a good for salivating one's mouth. So with these words, I probably end up my presentation. And thank you all for your patient hearing. If there are any questions which you feel that I will be in a position to answer, I will make an attempt to answer your queries. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank, thank, thank you, you sir. Thanks a lot for those uh, beautiful uh, knowledge transfer to us. Thank you. Uh, and that fruit looks very tasty. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. On uh, behalf of participants, I would like to, uh, if there are any questions, please ask, sir. Participants, are there any questions? If there are any questions, please redirect them to sir right now. Namaste, sir. I am Dr. P. Aruna, assistant professor in Sri Venkateshwara Veterinary University, Tirupati, sir. Right, ma'am. Sir, actually, my father is a sericulture farmer, sir, in at Chitu district of Andhra Pradesh. Yeah. Presently, in our area, cultivated two varieties of mulberry, sir. E1 variety and uh, now the imp uh, other improved variety came, sir, G2 variety. Sir, right, any other varieties are there than even this G2 varieties, sir? So, no, madam, I will tell you one thing. So far as your belt is concerned, I think V1 variety, which is victory one, probably which originated from Mysore, that is one of the best varieties because it gives you leaf yield to the extent of 69 metric tons per hectare per year. 
So this is one of the best varieties which uh, thrives in your Andhra Pradesh. Almost we have seen Prakash M district, we have seen Jitur. In fact, last year I had been to your Padmavati University, Trupati also. There also uh, this, uh, I mean, what you call as uh, V1 is better. But of late, there has been introduction from the, I think that G3 is again from CSR and TM, I sir? I don't know, sir, where from? Ah. Uh, uh, yes, there can be good number of varieties too, but at, as of now, because since it's a problem uh, of, the, of, the, of the southern belt, so they can perhaps suggest you better. But as of now, if you ask me, V1, Victory 1 is the best variety. Of course, you have to put in more amount of fertilizer there. That is perhaps 350, 70, 70 metric tons per hectare per year, but it gives you the better, uh, I mean, uh, yeah, it gives you the better yield. So you can get along with this variety, no issue. Okay, sir. Sir, any harvesting machines are there, sir, for mulberry harvesting? Because the farmers are spending more time on harvesting, sir. Other uh, which, madam, uh, madam, which type of uh, plantation system they are having? I told you there are three systems, bush, tall, and dwarf. What kind of system you, uh, I mean, uh, cultivation is being, mulberry tall, cultivation is being? Huh? Tall system, sir. Tall system, I do not feel it is of the it, it is of the height of average human being five to five and a half feet. I do not feel that you need any machinery to harvest them. And in case there are certain machineries available, what I would like to suggest you, yes, Central sir. Sericulture Research Institute and uh, Training Institute Mysore, that is at Srirampuram, they have a full fledged engineering division. You can get in, in touch with them. They can tell you if there is any leaf harvester which they have produced and they can be of help to you. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, ma'am. Thank you. Any other question, please? Sir, myself, yeah. uh, Kakasar Chauhan from Maharashtra. Uh, okay. My question is that uh, can this mulberry leaves used for the ensaling or silage preparation, sir? For the preparation of? Silage. 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 I, I do not, huh. uh, just frankly speaking, I do not have that idea, but you can get in touch with, again, the Mysore people, they can just perhaps uh, 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 reply your query. As of now, I do not have any idea. Oh, okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other question, please? Any other question, please? If there are no further questions, I think we must consider this session to be over. Uh, on behalf of uh, uh, IGFRI, as well as uh, on behalf of NEDCL, as well as on behalf of the participants, sir, uh, uh, we would like to thank you very much, sir. It was an informative presentation. We would like to thank you, and we would like to hear more uh, of you in future sessions. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We may all leave the session, and the session is over.